Good day, ladies and gentlemen. We are making kefir, as us exquisite folk like to say. And most of you guys know I say kefir, kefir, but I found out that kefir is the right way to say it. And it's something that has continuously come up in the context of animal foods, as that is a focus on my channel. From a rudimentary conventional point of view, you could say kefir is rotten milk, but true kefir is made with raw milk, ideally from grass-fed pasture-raised animals, which is very nutritious. And the main selling point of kefir, the reason it's so popular, is the magic of kefir grains. Just like you use yeast to make bread, a culture to make yogurt, the mother in apple cider vinegar, Kefir grains are a very specific type of mesophilic symbiotic culture. Mesophilic meaning it grows optimally between 20 to 45 degrees Celsius, aka 68 to 113 Fahrenheit. Symbiotic meaning these bacterial strains grow together without overpowering each other. These specific bacterial strains found in a true kefir culture are conducive to building a healthy gut microbiome. So you have the nutrient element, the vitamins, the minerals, the preformed fatty acids that are contained in raw dairy combined with these probiotic bacteria such as lactobacillus, bifido, streptococcus, beneficial yeasts like saccharomyces and every single one of these strains of bacteria have been shown to inhibit pathogenic bacteria in studies. The lactose in milk is broken down by the bacteria and yeast in these kefir grains turning mostly into lactic acid, resulting in an acidic tasting product. It also contains ethanol, aka alcohol. Studies usually finding a range of 1.5 to 2% alcohol in kefir, and this depends greatly on the fermentation time. We spoke about acetic acid in our apple cider vinegar video, how it benefits the gut. Kefir contains this as well as many more beneficial compounds. Let me show you guys how to make this magical drink. This is definitely the most difficult part of the whole process, sourcing the high quality raw dairy products that we need to make kefir. Here I have some raw goat milk. These are the heirloom kefir grains. And here I have some raw goat milk that we're going to let sit at room temperature for several days to make clabbered, AKA sour milk. The difference between clabbered milk and kefir is the starter culture used. We still have the wild yeast in the air that are going to ferment this milk, except due to the difference in bacteria, the environment, it's not going to be the same. Emphasis that you cannot replicate the kefir heirloom grains. You have to purchase them, whether it's from a raw dairy farm, whether it's on Craigslist, you cannot replicate these grains. Uh, very important to also note that you need non-reactive material. Kefir reacts to aluminum, uh, copper, nickel, certain metals. Uh, glass and stainless steel are okay, but you have to be very, very careful. So right now it's pretty cold in my kitchen. You know, even this glass jar is definitely below 68 degrees. So it's likely going to take two to three days to ferment as opposed to you know overnight, 12 hours. The warmer it is, the quicker this is going to ferment. Obviously in the summer, you won't have to do it nearly as long. You won't have to use nearly as many grains. So typically 5% of the weight of the grains is used in making kefir. I just put all of them in because I know the fermentation is going to be slow because it's cold. And then here we put the milk in. So I'm going to mix this up a little bit and it's important to mix this several times throughout the fermentation process. They used to store kefir in bags made from goat's stomach and they would hang them on the doorways. So when people pass through the doorways, they would mix it up. And that just keeps the lactose in contact with the kefir grains so that we build up all those beneficial compounds that the microbes are making from the lactose. So very simple. We have the milk mixed with the heirloom kefir grains and we just have some regular milk. We're gonna let these ferment side by side for you know two to three days. And then we'll look at them, we'll taste them. These need air, you can't cover this. Kefir needs to breathe, you know, don't, don't seal the lid. If you want, you can use cheesecloth and you definitely want to use cheesecloth if it's like somewhere outside. Otherwise, flies love this type of stuff. It has been 48 hours. As we said, the kitchen is a little cold this time of year, so we gave it a longer fermentation time. The kefir has separated, has a very fermented yeasty smell to it. 
You know, if you were to smell this, you'd be like, oh, it smells like bread. So we're gonna give this a little shake to mix it up. There's a lot of bubbles, a lot of fermentation still going on. And then here we have the sour milk that's also been sitting on the counter, which smells a little bit like yogurt actually. So I'm not gonna strain the kefir this time, I'm just gonna pour it into a cup. So the grains are in there this time, so I'm just swallowing them with the kefir. And I really love the taste of this stuff. I always start my day with it for the probiotics, for the nutrients. Really feel like it gives me an energy boost. And the combination of the protein, the acidity, the richness from the fat, the flavor of the milk. It's a really, really unique flavor combination. And not only that, you know, it's an understatement how important it is to have an unsalted fermented product in your diet. When these fermented foods are salted, like cheese, the type of bacteria that grow tend to be histamine promoting. So some people don't tolerate those fermented salted animal foods, whereas they do tolerate things like yogurt, kefir, and all of that stuff. So we're gonna try the milk too. I've never actually had this before. I think it could go another day or two. But these are two very, very different things. This tastes absolutely nothing like the kefir. This has no acidity, none of that alcoholic tinge. Doesn't really taste as good. Tastes kind of like bland, kind of flat. So if I was gonna make, you know, sour milk, clabbered milk, this probably needs a couple more days. But it's definitely changing. Jeannie, you wanna try some milk? It's goat milk. Camera ready. Uh. Hi, everybody. As you know, I got I went to get my hair done yesterday. It's called the keratin treatment to straighten it because my hair is as crazy as my brother's is straight. Well, do you guys like her hair wild and crazy like before, or do you like it straight? We'll, we'll, we'll let you know. What is lumps in it? <laughs> How does it taste, Gina? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. You don't like it? <sighs> okay, so it obviously wasn't that bad because she didn't like go to spit it out or anything. So even even the averse, the unapproachable. Tastes like grass. Like kefir. Okay, that's a, that's a pretty good comparison. I think yeah. it, it might taste like grass a little bit. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and above all guys, please share the video if you can. If you guys would like to support me further. Um. <laughs> what can they do, Gina? Um, please check out my brother's meat company, uh -huh. Frank's Free Range Meat. So you can go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com, high quality, nutrient dense animal foods at an affordable and price. And ladies, he's single. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh -huh.